anything that they recommended that would have been an improvement to a park, not only specifically for South Star, but for just events in general down there, um, we, uh, we, we accelerated very fast. And so it was just really, really um, fun to be on like the perspective from the city and being able to deliver on promises and, and timelines like that, like things that would normally take over a year to kind of get through and start, like with the staff of the figure, we were, we were moving a lot of things out there. And so, um, oh, that hurricane, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the What Podcast. I'm Barry, that's Russ. We are, um, I don't even know how we're going to describe this, Russ. We're in October. This is when we typically think the music festival season sort of takes a quiet time and, you know, what are we going to talk about every week? And it turns out it's probably as busy, if not busier, <laughs> than the middle of <laughs> the summer. busy. Yeah, right? who would have thought? Yeah, we, we thought we'd be on a break by now. Yeah, we're like, what are we going to talk about? Whatever would we talk about? Um, we're going to talk today. Uh, so this is going to be the final, I think. I say final, not final. We're going to kind of move on a little bit. We're going to wrap up South Star because we have a special guest. Um, South Star again in this for, for those of you do, who don't know, excuse me, for those of you who don't know, this is a podcast where we kind of like to focus on festivals, Bonnaroo being the primary, but we also like to go to other festivals. And uh, South Star happened in uh, Huntsville, what, three, what's it been, three weeks? Four Coming weeks? up on three weeks now, yeah. yeah. And uh, it got rained out. And so why does that matter? You know, you think you move on. But what we have found is we like that sort of sausage making. How do you deal with that? Uh, we talked in the past couple of weeks uh, with folks who were there, had a blast for the one day that it happened. We talked about the mud. We talked about why it was canceled. But today we have a special guest, uh, Matt. He's the dude. He is the uh, director of music operations for the city of Huntsville. So he was right there, right? I mean, he was Correct. helping make these decisions, not only to get it ready, but to, you know, make that call on Sunday morning, go, no go, right? Yeah. So you were there. Did you agree? Did he make the right oh, to call? Absolutely, 100%. Everyone, you know, when that call came out, that was about nine local time that said, uh, you know, we're not having the rest of the day. It was a moment of disbelief, like, oh, man. And then, well, no, you know, that does kind of make sense. I could see that. And then just kind of relief. Because, uh, you know, leaving there Saturday, it was getting really muddy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, this is interesting because it's what – so what goes into that decision to, to say cancel, pull the plug – and this this really gets into it, you know, and and the things that they tried to do uh, to try to prevent a cancellation, because that is the last thing anybody wants, including us, including the artists, including the city. Um, but, you know, when it's the right call, that's the way it's got to go. Yeah, that's what's fun about this. And uh, you and and Russ, you'll agree, Matt and so many of the people that we have on this show. And, and it's interesting to me. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just old and cynical, but I keep thinking about, you know, some suit somewhere is making a decision that, you know, he doesn't care. He's mm -hmm. just looking at a spreadsheet. We haven't had that. Have, have, we haven't found that guy yet, have we? Not in this industry. I mean, that certainly exists for a lot of things out in the world, I'm sure. And, you know, we, yeah. and there's plenty to complain about because that does happen. But in this industry, in this case, uh, it's people like you and me that are that are putting this yeah. thing on. It's another dude who just wants to go see Gwen Stefani, right? Or Blink One Eighty Two, yeah. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> because his kid <laughs> wants to see go <laughs> go see mm -hmm. Blink One Eighty Two, and now he's got to he's got to tell him it isn't happening because it's muddy. Yeah, um, I also think this is a good response to. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure you've seen them. There's some comments that people have made. I'll 
on social media, you know, criticizing them for canceling and say, oh, the city will never have them back. This is the last year. They'll, I can't believe they'll, they'll never have this festival again. Well, no, that's not the case. And that's kind of what sets us apart is when we have those questions, we find out who to ask and go ask them. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right. So we, we called Matt. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. I, yeah. Actually, I reached out to the city. I wanted the mayor. Uh, yeah, because I know he was such a big deal in all of this, and they said, "No, the person you need is Matt," and Matt was great. Is great. They were right. Yeah, were... his title, I believe, is uh, chief music officer. Is that right? Some yeah, and he's the only one. We look. Yeah, we tried. It might we'll be the only one in the that, country. Right? Only yeah. one in the country. Uh, How many uh, cities have a chief music officer? Yeah, we talk about that, and it, mm-hmm. you know. Let's don't just pass by that because a lot of cities have a pers- a person in their chamber or something that, you know, entertainment, movies, whatever, and mm-hmm. music is in the title somewhere. And a, not a lot gets done. Uh, and he talks about that. They are committed. Uh, and that's 100%. why I think this is so interesting. Uh, they are so committed that they are willing to, uh, you know, put on this event. And it, this was it. I didn't know this until you asked. I think you asked because you had heard about the contract. The contract mm-hmm. is for three years. Well, it wasn't supposed to start till next year. Right. I mean, right? Yeah, that's fascinating because they, you know, they started this journey thinking that 2025 and beyond is what they were looking at. Yeah, a realistic and, uh, goal. We can do this. The- Next year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as late as April of this year, they were still thinking, okay, it's going to be 2025. Right. And then what happened? What Blink said, hey, we want to headline something. What have you got? And they uh, yeah. pulled, yeah, managed to pull off a festival in a shockingly short amount of time. When you consider everything that goes into, you know, because this is a, it's right. a park, you know, so it's basically got nothing. And how much they built and contracted and pulled in and set up just in those few months. Yeah. So um, while we were off air, I was trying to think about who is the listener for this show. If you're Mm -hmm. that person who bought a ticket because you wanted to see whatever band that was on the lineup, and now you're mad because it got rained out, I'm sorry. I get it. I 100% get it. You're going to be mad. Mm -hmm. But if you're that person who's been there you know maybe to a different you know meant more than one or two like Russ like me if you're ankle deep in mud it's fun for a minute it yeah. might be fun for that afternoon it might be mm-hmm. fun for three or four bands but at some point you start thinking about your own well-being and your comfort and then right. as I said I think I said uh you know you wake up that next morning and you got to put those same wet shoes on. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't uh if you didn't pack for 2 days of mud, yeah, then it's not as much right. fun. <laughs> also, uh you know, the needle kind of moves a little bit from just an inconvenience to being yeah. uncomfortable to being dangerous. I mean, yeah, it, and that's the what last happens. thing they want is uh somebody to slip and fall and get trampled or, you know, some and other security or, can't you know, get to you because they can't get to you. And yeah. yeah. They said the, the golf cart paths were right. you know, muddied up. You know, if they can't get critical services in and out, it's just not, and the happen, band can't so. get there and the band standing in mud and they're going to get electrocuted. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a There's lot, a lot more of safety than, to it. It's a lot more than you want to think about. And, uh, and that's kind of what we talk about, but also we talk about, and this is really, and we're going to have to have him back on. Oh, 100%. Uh, 100% we're going to have to have Matt back on because Huntsville is committed to becoming a music city and a music destination, and there's way more involved in that and just saying that's what we want to do. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, you know, because that's what it right. sounds like a lot of cities do. Yeah, we want to have music. Well, okay. <laughs> You know, yeah. what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> Huntsville, yeah, Huntsville's actually got a plan, and, and this music festival is only one part of it. I thought that was fascinating when he was talking about some of the other um, benefits and packages that they're looking at trying to offer 
to encourage more artists to play Huntsville and to tour and you know, what, what can they do to help enable that? Pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's detailed, but not as much. I, I want to get into it cause we, we ended up getting into the South star way more than I thought we would. Cause I wanted to mm-hmm. talk about the other stuff because Chattanooga where we live is, you know, we pretend like we're committed to this too, but I mean, they're talking about giving stipends, basically grants, uh, if you will, to bands who are touring and doing five shows a year. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, right. It's not just, hey, we need to have a venue. You know, it's it's much more than that. And um, yeah, I, I yeah, they're they're thinking much much more long term than you and I realized. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. It's a long interview. Uh, this was a long setup. Uh, that's because you wouldn't stop talking. I, I can Sorry. never get you to stop talking. <laughs> yeah, every time. <laughs> All right, guys, here's Matt. And, uh, man, he was great. And I can't wait to have him on again. Oh, by the way, that's an awesome T-shirt. Thank you. Show everybody yeah, that T-shirt. Is, uh, this is from uh, Cave Fest, which I just got back from this past weekend in Pelham, Tennessee, not far from Bonnaroo, not far from Manchester. And, wanted to get into that this week but i think we've got so much more that yeah you know we might have to just put that off a little bit because we've got matt here to deal with yeah Mm -hmm. we're gonna do that soon i can't wait to hear it and we'll have i hope some special guests to talk about that too yeah i wish i'd have got you to buy me one of those (laughs) t-shirts and you'd talk about that all right yeah uh, you'll you'll just have to go next year yeah, there. All right, so here we go with Matt, and uh, thanks, Matt, for your time. And uh, I, 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 we'll we'll just see where this goes. Oh, there he is. Hey, Matt. This is Matt from Huntsville. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. This is we're gonna try to cover as much as we can because you you. I'll be honest with you. You have, I think, one of the jobs that I would probably like to have, and I'm betting <laughs> Brian feels pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't bother me none at all. Yeah, uh, the the little I know about it, which that's what we're here to find a little bit more out about. So let's just jump right in first. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, um, and I know you've probably had your uh, follow up meetings with your staff, and probably even with the. Uh, organizer c3 and some of that so what's the uh two week uh recap of south star from your your office um i mean it's a little bit of uh you know it's it's a little bit of, it's it's mostly highs a little bit of lows honestly the um uh to those that aren't aware like we got in one of the two days and then the uh the weather just was not uh did not hold up with the grounds where we had to uh, cancel sunday but um, and I, overall, I would feel like it's a, a huge success, like getting, uh, getting a day of the festival to, for, for the community to see the vision, um, is, uh, very exciting and, uh, how the C3 team executed it and everything like that. And now the, uh, now the pressure is on the fans asking when it's going to come back, uh, if it's going to come back. So that's a, uh, a huge, uh, a, a huge upside. And then, uh, you know, and, it, and also I thought it was a positive to where the, uh, you know, anytime you cancel a band, it's obviously not great for fans, but, um, but you also have to look at it where like most of the fans are upset because they had the time of their life on Saturday and then they couldn't come back on Sunday and have the party. So they were willing to work, uh, willing to do our risk on uh, safe conditions, even though like have the party out there. So we're just thrilled with everything, seeing all the guests that came in from out of town, the community grew response. South Star was a huge success in the market. Let me go back one, and then I, I know Brian's got questions. I can see him ready, but I want to ask a t- t- sort of time leap. So that was the recap. Going into South Star, again, from your point of view, from your office as uh, what music officer for the city of Huntsville, what were the goals? What was the the stated mission for this? And, and I'm thinking, obviously, you know, you want to have a good concert and see good bands. That's That's the obvious one, but you know, you, you've got an official role. Um, we've talked to you on this show that Huntsville has gone after uh, music and things like this for the city. So I, I kind of want to, what's the, you know, what was your elevator pitch when you were talking about this? Sure. You know, it kind of has a, a, a three tier of success approach where 
um, a little bit of backstory before um, I started the uh, my role here. We uh, I started the Hustle Music Office in um, middle of 2022. Um, Huntsville had a festival for about 15 years that ended about a decade earlier called Big Spring Jam. Um, the number one thing our community and any kind of stakeholder surveys or any kind of feedback, literally since the day I started the office, um, the community was asking, like, is Big Spring Jam going to come back? We want a big festival again. Can we make that happen? So there was a lot of pressure from the community and a lot of enthusiasm to try bring a festival back. Now, as you all know, there's only so many um, companies in the world that really can execute uh, a large world-class festival on the scale that, um, you know, like, like our partner, C3 Presents, can. So uh, it took about 18 months to get from the first conversation to the uh, city council agreement for them to uh, – come into it, but the uh, one aspect was, um, of course, that community quality of life uh, initiative. Um, another one, of course, is the um, tourism and the uh, economic development side of it. These festivals bring in a lot of visitors, um, and so uh, obviously, like, that was a big uh, aspect of it. And then something we're doing with music that's really, really fun and unique is that um, uh, we're utilizing it as a talent attraction um, uh, piece with, like, our uh, economic development model in that Huntsville has a very, very rare, um, very, very rare challenge in that we have um, among the lowest unemployment in the country, but we have several thousand very high paying jobs that need to be filled. Um, and so we're utilizing t uh, music as a way to help fill those jobs with like the other industries within the, uh, within the area. So you kind of see the festival as a learn about Huntsville through the festival, visit Huntsville for the first time, through this festival and then um, maybe move here or think about relocating here um, when you have a family or et cetera. And so that's kind of the piece we use with like the Orion Amphitheater and all the music where, uh, you know, more, more music in a community makes it a better place to live. So you have that quality of life initiative and then of course what it does with economic development and then that uh, talent attraction are kind of the big three uh, pillars that we uh, we kind of focus on in terms of the music offices uh, work in this festival. Obviously a huge piece with that. Well, Matt, there's a handful of directions that I want to go here that we have very limited time to, to get to. To stick with where we're at with the festival itself, you used some words just a second ago that made me think, and I, I, I don't want to quote you exactly or a little paraphrase, something about people locally were wondering about, you know, will it come back after the year that you had? And maybe you can help us with a, what I believe is a rumor. I never saw anything that I could source it to find out whether it was accurate or not, that there was a three-year contract between C3 and the city of Huntsville, your your offices, your initiatives, between something governmentally. Can you speak to that? Or is that information that you're privy to give out? Is there a long-term, even if it's a short long-term commitment with the C3 and South Star? Absolutely. And yeah, correct. There is a uh, there is a three-year contract. Um, the yeah, contract actually starts in 2025, um, but there was enough enthusiasm and momentum for the uh, – for the team to, uh, they felt oh. like they could pull off a successful year. I want to go back. I want to go back yeah, there, but go ahead. Eighty two kind of pushed that, right? Yeah, yeah I want to go yeah. back there, but continue. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, and so we, um, yeah, so we're actually in. Um, yeah, so we actually kind of have like a a, a bonus year, um, or, or kind of like accelerated it up. But yeah, we have a. Uh, we're we're planning to at the very least uh, have three of these with C three presents, and obviously, like we want. We want more, you know, we, we want to get a good decade run out of this and really, really build it um, into something special. And so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, do not look at this as a one and done. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to be jumping in and figuring out what uh, what year two looks like here soon. The third th the third leg of the, the mission that you mentioned is one of the things, um, and the reason I asked that question, because of the people that I spoke to that went, um, Huntsville was a as much a part of the festival and the um, the good feeling of it as the music it's, itself from everybody that I talked to and that's fans who went to staff that worked it. I mean, I I, I won't name names because you know it was a private conversation. But this person's like, I'm from New York and I can't wait to go back to Huntsville as a visitor. Um, the Sunday. And Russ can speak to to this. Um, 
you know, when you got everybody got word that it wasn't going to happen on Sunday, they just kind of said, all right, how do we, you know, let's go have some fun. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the restaurants. Let's go to the bar, even Saturday night. Um, that that has to – that has to have uh, played well in your office Monday morning a week ago. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's like we said. It's like it's not like all these people are coming in town, staying in their hotel rooms, uh, screaming at the walls. Um, it gave them an opportunity to come out to Huntsville and experience the uh, the restaurants and the culture. We had a really, really solid day with um, our other attractions. The uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center is here in Huntsville. That's the largest tourist attraction in the state of Alabama. And so they, uh, they saw a, a nice big influx of uh, visitors. There was a uh, Sunday night at the Avon Braun Center. There was a, a wrestling, a WWE event, and uh, we heard that they had a, a huge yep. influx of like last minute ticket sales. Actually, went with the uh, with my four year old daughter and took her to her first wrestling event, and it was a uh, very <laughs> fun. But yeah, just the the, uh, the energy around downtown on Sunday. Um, Sunday is usually kind of like sleepy quiet downtown, but there is a significant energy downtown. So I've come to some prop through kind of like block parties from local musicians playing outside that have like uh, much more bigger crowds than they normally do. And you just saw like just you know more people um, around than you usually see on a Sunday. I got to ask, how, how bad were the grounds? You know, they uh, we were actually just out there yesterday, and uh, they don't like they don't look. You wouldn't be able to tell there was a music festival out there. The team did a really, really good job of cleaning up everything. We just, um, you know, that side of the park just, um, I'd say about fifty percent of the park is what you probably saw in the pictures, where it was just like really, really muddy and unsafe, and you know, potentially some infrastructure having liabilities, some emergency services not being able to respond to the time, um, and that's mostly because the um, we just had put some fresh sod down and so they had done some work to the grounds to kind of um, to accelerate and kind of get everything ready for that 2024 instead of 2025. If, um, you know, it, as you might know, like once you get a, a hurricane level rainstorm on fresh sod, that just um, ended up not holding like we wanted to. And we're going to make, um, you know, that, that's something our landscape team is very confident they can adjust going into next year. Just the, uh, the grass was too new, but Park looks great right now. That's just a uh, John Hunt Park's 450 acres and super scale. That's 100 acres bigger than Grant Park in Chicago where Lala is. And so this kind of like 30, 35 acre parcel where your one of South Star is, about half of it was just new grass that just like didn't hold up well. But um, you, if you went out there right now, you wouldn't be able to tell there was a festival other than that. You know, that, that red play is now kind of like a mix of like green and brown and the, we're going to start looking at that soon and making uh, adjustments ASAP. Well, that uh, that that takes me right back to where I wanted to go back to um, because that that adds a little bit to the question. I was looking at uh, Huntsville Magazine uh, from April of this year that had a write up on. I think it's primarily you, but there was uh, some other things within the city, infrastructure, music wise. And the information was attributed to you. I don't have a printer at the house, so everything's handwritten here. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry uh, if I stumbled through some of it. But I, from April of 2024, the information was attributed to you that the initial agreement for the South Star Festival was for 25, as you just said, 25, and I guess would be 26, 27. That was in April of this year, and you were saying <laughs> it's going to be in 25, which would have been, sep- I'm guessing, September that is a rapid acceleration to September, you know, to three weeks ago. And we know Blink-182 had a lot to do with that because we've already talked about that here slightly, but we didn't know a whole lot of details. Tell me that real quick. How did that pivot so fast, and did you panic? And, and, did, and was, I guess that led to also maybe let's throw some sod down, let's make sure we're good to go on the, on the, on the, on the site itself. If you'd speak to that yeah. fast transition, because that's just not something you see every day. Yeah, it's like, hey, sure. guess what, honey? Um, we're, we're hosting Christmas <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Everybody's coming. <laughs> you know, it uh, definitely wasn't panic. Um, I would say it was a lot more enthusiasm. Um, you know, when, when we heard that we were going to, like, move up a year, it was – almost like a bonus um so i yeah i wouldn't say panic at all it just kind of got us in the high gear the the, the, the way that huntsville's government works a lot different than than other governments in terms of we take a lot of pride in how efficiently we can do things and um 
and, and, and the leadership I have in the city is so supportive of this music uh, initiative and everything we're doing, and we're seeing it. Now that like we've been into it two years, we're really, really seeing the results. I mean, we have C3, C3 Presents coming into a market with 240,000 people in here to like build a uh, signature festival. That's absolutely amazing. And yeah. so um, it, it was initially enthusiasm, but then it was like, oh, wow, like we already just added a lot more work for ourselves. Well, that's what I meant by the panic part. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I tend to, when I say panic, just high level anxiety, but. Um, well then, and then quickly also to to kind of piggyback off of that, with the added variable of mm-hmm. this this weather situation, you just talked about the grounds. You were looking at them in the last twenty four hours. They look good. You've, I mean, it's grass. It's ground. I mean, we all, it's going to be fine. We all know that long term. But can you really evaluate what? Did and didn't work. Can you really put in an accurate evaluation to what happened? And I think the quick answer is no, not really. But but how are you working with making your je- your, your, your checklist when a hurricane came in and destroyed everything you were trying to do? Like it makes it very difficult. It's hard to plan. Can, hard to can plan. Can the grounds that, yeah. hold that many people next year? Were lines for bathrooms, waters, all the stuff we talk about on the show about every single festival that is from a user experience standpoint. How do you evaluate that now? Maybe the answer is you can't accurately. What What do you say to that? Oh no, I'd, I'd say we're already evaluating it. And then you know that that one patch where the main stage was, uh, you know, if it was the other half of the park, which had already been, um, you know, that had been laser graded and like the sod had been there for years. That's where like a lot of like the youth um, soccer and football teams practice. Like uh, that side held up great. If the um, if all of that stuff was on, like, the entire park, like, mm-hmm. I think that we're looking at a successful Sunday. Um, the reality is, is when we did a walkthrough at 4 o'clock on Friday, we started getting uh, um, very nervous. Uh, it was just getting really slippery out there. Um, mm-hmm. and it was one of those where it's like, oh, it says the rain's going to stop, but the rain's not stopping. Every time you looked on your phone, it felt like from Friday to Saturday. It's saying like rain stopping in 15 minutes, but it I, just never yeah. stopped. Yep. Traveling yeah. from Chattanooga there, I did the same thing. I was like, I th- it looks like it's going to be good. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. No, it does. Yeah. No, it doesn't. And that's hurricane weather. I mean, that's what we deal with in the South. You know, you you can't, the, the meteorologists get so much bleep about being, oh, there's always wrong. Man, they ain't miracle workers. Yeah. It's a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, yeah. And, 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 and you know, and in hindsight, it's like, wow, like, I mean, it was more than just a hurricane. We look at like all the challenges that are happening in like communities, like we're infrastructure. Very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're lucky that we lost a day of a music festival and, and, and not significantly more like, you know, like, like our heart goes out to like the Aspen, North Carolina areas and everybody that's affected. It's just hard to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt, can you, you know, I, I will say like what, what made me like very, very proud is I've, I've been involved with like a lot of festivals, like over the kind of 20 years of my music career, some good, some bad. And, you know, there's there's always like in, in any kind of situation, you can kind of come out with like a uh, a lot of camaraderie and a lot of pride. Um, I've never been more proud of an effort uh, of being involved with this aspect with both the C3 and the city um, uh, a team to where, you know, we, we, we did a thorough walkthrough at four o'clock on Friday with like the head of our uh, our our our, our uh, city, our city administrator, John Hamilton, and the head of our landscape team, uh, Tony Ivey. Uh, I think it's safe to say those guys are music industry, music festival industry legends now in terms of what they pulled off. Because um, the, the fact that we got in Saturday was, was amazing, and that you know Tony had about 200 of his landscape team out there the full day Friday trying to patch everything up, and then Saturday six in the morning he had a convoy of every dump truck that the city had with every like all the mulch you could find like within the region. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the stuff they put on the warning track, they call it warning track, uh, material at baseball games to soak up the stuff. So diamond seeing drive, the effort diamond that drive, the city yeah. put in and just seeing that line of dump trucks and 200 people waiting there at six in the morning uh, and going up until, you know, we had to push the gates back to two thirty, which was also a big, uh, thank you to the local restaurants for, uh, the, the local restaurants were very appreciative of like the gates moving from, uh, from oh, one to two thirty because they were crushing it much. Yeah. But the uh, yeah the uh, the C three team even put a slide up like on the stages on their ad mags in between bands like doing a big thank you to Tony because I mean they just they they, they came in and saved the day 
Um, but that just like constant rain, constant foot traffic on that one yeah. side of the park just made it where it was undoable on Sunday. But we're just, you know, we're, we're so lucky that we got in that Saturday. And then also for the community aspect, like now the, the locals in Huntsville have seen the scale of like what this event is. And most of the people that were locals here that went to that had never been to uh, a, a C3 Presents festival. And so and as you all know, like, I mean, they're very world class. Like they, that uh, their their infrastructure like definitely makes a statement. And so it's, it's one of those you have to see to believe it. And now that our community has seen it, they are just like so excited to uh, to get it back in. You know, we need uh, there's some pent up demand for Blink 182 and Beck now in our market too. Yeah. And so if, uh, even if it doesn't work with the South Star aspect, like hopefully we'll can figure out like how to get like the acts that didn't make it that Sunday. You got the venue sitting there right there yeah. waiting on them, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Couple of, yeah. A couple of things. And then I, I know I want to get into the city part of it, but you know, wrap up the, the festival, but uh, a couple of things. And I know numbers are always squirrely, but what would have been a sellout? And can you give us some idea of what uh, the crowd was on Saturday. I've heard somewhere between 2025, 20, you mm-hmm. know, and that's just friends of mine in the industry guessing. So uh, I'd be curious to know. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, we don't have the exact numbers, but I think it's safe to say it came in around 20 on that Saturday. Um, we uh, were projecting to do a, uh, a couple thousand more on Sunday, just with like the lineup and everything. And I think not having a, a big slate of college football, like lens for more people yeah. to, to, uh, sure. to, to, to know what they're going to do on the Sundays versus Saturdays down south. Um, you know, sell, uh, sell out year one, we didn't really have a sell out number just because of the size of that park. Um, you can fit 50,000 people in that footprint very, very easily. Um, but, you know, our target was somewhere around that 25,000 in year one. Okay. We thought that would be a really, really uh, good benchmark for success. And I think that all things given, like y'all seen the images and like to the people that were out there, like it felt crowded. It felt it felt really, really good and, and packed, but not too packed out there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say that we uh, we definitely hit our goal of uh, getting the uh, the amount of people out there. And and I know we even had a few thousand people not uh, actually like stand in on that Saturday too, just because they couldn't travel in because there was a hurricane and, sure. and last minute like yeah, kind of things I like that. Add, so. I, I would say twenty is a good number then, given everything. The other thing you mentioned, yeah, earlier. that would that would put us as the um, that would put us as the highest attended regional music festival uh, in terms of a daily attendance of all the ones that are like kind of already established in our market. So you know, the fact that near one we had a <laughs> with all those conditions and a hurricane, twenty thousand people. Um, through the door, I think was tremendous, and I think also shows that just like the uh, the kind of thirst that our community has for music. You mentioned two things: the you're, a lot of the Huntsville people and some of our friends that are down there were saying the same thing going in that uh, you know a lot of this a lot of the folks that have never been have no idea what to expect. And and one of the things that you mentioned, and that's one of the things that C three is so good about, and another thing that we love talking about on this show because we love the sausage making is. Like we're big Bonnaroo people. That's how we. Mm-hmm. That's why we started this. And one of the things that they do that kind of goes unnoticed until you notice it is things like laser grading the the land. They they walk around with notepads and pencil and say, "That's where the rain's going. We need to fix that. We need to level mm-hmm. that. We need to raise that. We need to put this there. You know, trees here. Those kind of things make a huge difference over time. So. I was curious to hear you say that, that, you know, had you done that on the other side, which I'm assuming you will do in the next oh, yeah. and a half months, you know, it improves everything. So the next time around, if it rains, it's not as bad. And in the case of Bonnaroo, if it, if it doesn't rain, then you've got a dust bowl. So, you know, yeah. you know those kinds and, of and- things. At, at the uh, at into that notice, I mean, like it was, I, I was mind blown in that, um, you know, like I, I did not work in city government before this realm. I was in the private sector, so I'm a new city government guy. But um, and you know, through through efforts, have had to work through city governments, and it has not always been pleasant. Um, but just uh, you know, like like the uh, like Ted and his team, Corey and Oscar, were very vocal that they had never worked with a city government in the capacity like Tuskell did, and that like just how productive we were for them. Um, so, you know, with, with that saw too, like, I mean, if it was 2025, like, oh, those roots would have been in place. It would have had like a year of winter pill. It would have looked great. Um, that saw was like an example of like a city improvement to those grounds uh, to get things ready for 2024 and uh, 
you know, that's just one example. Like for, for a couple other things for that, um, you know, they would communicate some aspects of like, hey, there's one part of this park that doesn't meet like ADA standards. We're going to have to, so heads up, we're going to have to bring in, um, uh, some really expensive temporary flooring to make kind of like an ADA path and, and to fit within our guidelines. And we said, well, hey, what if we just, you know, help do that for you? Um, and so we put in a lot of, um, so if you know, there were a lot of like kind of like sidewalks built into the, uh, built into the park that uh, accommodated that as well. Cause we looked at it as like, hey, this is something that, um, we need to do on a permanent basis if we can accelerate that. And, you know, and they were like, yeah, this would be, there were a lot of things where they were like, uh, yeah, this would be great for 2025. And we're like, no, we're talking about 2024. And so, you know, two months leading up to that festival, I mean, there were sidewalks going from, um, you know, the airport road, like along that backside, like where all the businesses, like, like the back 40 brewery and all those kind of like story parking lots were those, um, you know, those sidewalks were all brand new being worked on up until the festival. And so, and that came about where like, it was like, Hey, you know, we're going to have to probably close a lane of this street during certain times to allow for like pedestrian traffic. You know, we'd love to have a sidewalk in place next year. And that's when like the city, especially like the, uh, our, our leadership with John Hamilton, the city administrator be like, well, no, we're going to go ahead and activate our uh, public work team and get a sidewalk in place for this year. And so anything that they recommended that would have been an improvement to a park, not only specifically for South Star, but for just events in general down there, um, we, uh, we, we accelerated very fast. And so it was just really, really, um, fun to be on like a perspective from the city and being able to deliver on promises and, and timelines like that, like things that would normally take over a year to kind of get through and start. Like with the snap of a finger, we were, we were moving a lot of things out there. And so, um, Oh, that hurricane, no, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, really fast before we, I know we want to talk some governmental stuff here that we would like oh, yeah. to correlate some with uh, with what we're familiar with and we're from. But before we do that, just the if you would, as, as quickly as you can or, uh, or as much as you want to stretch out on it, uh, from, you, you, you talked about Friday being there and kind of being like, eh, ooh, not sure. Yeah. Um, and, and the weather keeps changing, the forecast. As that was being monitored, let's say Thursday, Friday, into Saturday, how much do you know or how much were you involved um, to to be making the decision for Sunday? And and when roughly do you think that that decision was made? Halfway through Saturday, you're realizing Sunday's not going to work. Was it the middle of the night call, you know, frantic 5 a.m., you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and I promise you, somebody was panicking around on your team. Yeah, how big was the? How there's big too was much the going on here for there not to be panic. But uh, uh, but just yeah, that process from middle of the week to when you decide we can't continue because of safety uh, and weather. How did that go? And how many people were on that go no go team? Uh, it was a well, it was a very very tight circle. It was um, you know the the uh, the kind of executive level side of like their team, and then only like myself and maybe like three or four more people at the city that were uh, um, directly involved in the conversation. Of course, like everybody was aware, um, you know, the um, I would say that the walkthrough on Friday is when uh, it first kind of came up like, oh, wow, like, you know, this might be tough. Might get um, one in. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, but then like kind of uh, at 6 a.m. seeing it's kind of like that, that tongue line of like all the gravel and everything. It was just like, okay, like we're going to, we're going to make this happen. Um, and then, um, you know, we started doing a thorough walkthrough of the grounds, um, about halfway through the headliner sets on Saturday, starting to assess things and having the conversations, uh, just kind of observing and everything. And that's, that's when the, uh, the conversation accelerated and picked up, but, um, you know, it, it, it sucked. It was, uh, not a, uh, not, not the most awesome decision that like a, a conversation you have to have, but, but at the end of the day, it was a, um, there, there was no doubt 110% that it was the right decision. And so that's where, um, I mean, kind of like the pain got alleviated. Like when you know you're doing the right decision and like you're, you give it your best effort and, uh, and you're proud of what you're doing. I mean, mother nature is going to be mother nature. And so, yeah. I'd say by uh, the starting at the middle of the headliners on Saturday is when we really started paying attention and watching people like leave, uh, you know, like like seeing people holding their kids, struggling through the mud and slipping and falling as they're walking out of the show really kind of put things in perspective. Uh, um, and then you start thinking, wow, it's like the last thing you would want is somebody to get hurt, like with some of this infrastructure. 
Um, and also, too, if, like, if, if there was a medical event, can the EMS get to people in time? And so it just, um, it was absolutely, like, the right decision. It didn't help that we had a really, really solid day of weather the next day for kind of people to be like, oh, we should have had this, but I think that's why. It was Seems like it happens that way every time. Yeah, but and that, that's yeah. I wanna, I'm glad you asked this question, Brian, because I want to dig a little, like, like, thinking about it from that first time, festival goer who doesn't know who doesn't listen to this show if such a thing can even happen but like that person who just says it wasn't raining that hard and i wanted to see my favorite band um why did they cancel you know they don't think about and that's what i'm asking you what are the sort of checklist things right there's safety there's band safety there's crowd safety there's you know can you get people in and out and and there is this, you know, the infrastructure. Are we destroying what we have? And, you know, so what are the what was the checklist kind of thing? Uh, safe safety, number one, for sure. Um, can we execute like can, can 25,000 people come out on Sunday and it be a safe experience? Um, and, and, and that absolutely that answer is absolutely not like both a combination of the grounds. I mean, you're you're, you're talking, you know, like medical things like in terms of twisted ankles and things like that like you know like we were going to like anticipate bringing in more ems more police and everything like that to accommodate sunday just because we were seeing some people um you know starting to slip and need to kind of like come to the medical team and get some band-aids and stuff like that and so that seemed to kind of like uh elevate things and then just with the um you know like like if any of like the footing on any of those large tents, like even though they were like heavily staked in the ground and like like in place, like it just oh you just never know when like water weight's gonna like like mess up with things. There's just too much heavy equipment being like moved around. Uh, golf cart paths were starting to get like compromised and everything like that. And so it just um, it just was not gonna be if, if if it was like a couple dozen folks coming out there that could like deal with the mud, like great, but you're talking if twenty five thousand right. plus people that could be really, really challenging. And then, and then also with the first year festival, I think that I, um, it's safe to say that the experience aspect probably played into it too. Like it just, you know, that, like there would have been people that tucked it out and like would have dove in the mud and kind of done like, we got a lot of um, nods to like, I think it was Woodstock 94 and some of the comments and everything like that. And the, it's like easily said, it's, it's more said than done in terms of like, you know, wanting to like brave the mud in those conditions for a full day. And yeah. uh, I know festival goers are kind of used to that. But at the end of the day, like we, you know, we want to deliver, their, their team wanted to deliver a world class experience. And, uh, you know, that the safety was one thing for both the artists and the spectators, but also the, um, you know, just, just being able to deliver an event we were proud of. Um, you know, I just don't see how that would have been yeah. possible on Sunday. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had a great time because I'd like, could, could swim around in the mud and be and be fine and everything, but I think that um, you know, I would not have had a great time if uh, if, if I would have like twisted an ankle or uh, or, yeah. or or something like that. You know? Well, even even Russ was ready to tap out on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it just it was a um, yeah. But once the decision was made, it was like it, it was such a. I mean, I don't want to say relief because that, like, you know, because it was definitely like, you know, like we were definitely bummed out about it. No, I get what the, you mean. The last man. people that want to cancel the event, I promise, are the people throwing the event. Right. Um, for both just like financial and just like, I mean, you know, it's not just like we started working on this the week, the week before the show, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was, uh, there, there was no anxiety. The only anxiety around it was like knowing we were going to have to let the fans out. There was no anxiety at any point on it. Like we were not, if we were, making the right or wrong decision because we're 110 percent new that after just seeing the ground especially after Gwen Stefani and the lights came up and you saw it it was like oh wow like Tony has seen work a miracle on Saturday but I mean there just there was not enough mulch I think in the southeast that could have uh, <laughs> that they could have helped those grounds yeah Russ what did you what do you got for Matt before we uh, and we're gonna have to get into the government thing pretty quick yeah, yeah. Russ is the only one yeah, that actually was, made it on the grounds I actually made it and uh, I wasn't supposed to be there but because of the hurricane my flight to Florida got canceled so I ended up in Huntsville and then oh wow of course yeah so uh, but yeah I think from a fan's perspective it was pretty much the same reaction on Sunday when the news came out it was kind of a oh man because you know Sunday especially for me, uh, musically, Sunday was more stacked than Saturday. Mm -hmm. If I had to pick one day, I would have picked Sunday. But, you know, we all kind of quickly realized, well, no, actually that makes sense, and I think that everybody agreed that's the yeah, right call. Yeah, do we really want to do this again? 
Yeah, and then it was like, <laughs> okay, well, we just get a free day in Huntsville to you know do whatever we want. So you know, there really was there was a little bit of disappointment at first but then we all sort of came around to okay well yeah this this is a good thing for you know that's the right call so well, we all uh, we all know there's yeah. there's nothing worse than putting on wet shoes i mean like nobody likes <laughs> going that next day with you know putting your wet golf shoes back on <laughs> right and, and we actually all... my, uh, my my 20 year old festival boots actually did not make it uh through south star the uh, the soles of the by the end of the night uh, i had uh my boots were gap taped or uh, gap taped up and yeah. everything so it's a shelf life on everything <laughs> yeah because i was kind of walking through too like kind of like stepping in every uh puddle and hole I could find just to see how deep they were and everything like that. And mm-hmm. so um, it's so it's yeah, the I'm not a big fish <laughs> I'm not a big fish fan, but it's the the lyric that always sticks with me. Whatever you do, take care of your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Whatever you it's do, it's the truth. All right, so real quick, and Matt, I we might have to do this again if you're willing. Oh, I'd love I, to. I, yeah, I definitely. But uh, I'm I'm curious. You are. I saw one of the articles uh, that said you might be the only music officer wrote, in the country. I wrote that the, down too. Is, 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 that was that was written very uh, non-officially and somewhat flippantly. But is mm-hmm. there is there tr- truth to it, or does, is this a position that at least from in the initial point you're the only one that has that in Correct, governmental mother. city government? Correct. I was the, uh, well, there are a couple other state offices now starting to pop up. And what's really cool yeah, is that, like, you know, we're you kind know. of, and, and, and so there are other music officers. Now. I believe the, uh, the, uh, I believe Jimmy Wheeler at, at uh, Tennessee Music Office is now referring himself as a music officer. Uh, Louisiana has a music officer now. Um, and so, uh, that, some have had really them, weird. not to, sorry to interrupt, but some have, it's been under another umbrella. It's like arts, Correct. entertainment, movies, and oh, music down here at the bottom. But but Huntsville is fully committed, right? One hundred percent. Like my office is in City Hall, like one floor, of, like uh, away from the mayor. I report to uh, uh, report to the mayor, and then I report to uh, Shane Davis and John Hamilton, who are uh, economic development and like city administrators. So you got the mayor, John Shane, and then. Uh, you know, like so. Basically, it's like I'm uh, one call away from like a top brass of the city, and in terms of, uh, you know, like like the, the, in terms of like a mayoral initiative that like we're putting a lot of, that we put a lot of thought and resources into executing. Uh, we're, we're we're taking early our music environment very very seriously from the city, um, and uh, it's it's the, the the way that we can get things done and having a city music office at City Hall in terms of just cutting through the red tape. I mean, if it was just a, a, a private sector or the chamber that needed to get the sidewalk uh, in place in John Hunt Park a month before a, a festival, I mean, that just would not be possible. But um, the fact that, like, you know, we have a direct line with our leadership and we're one call away with, like, from any department is is huge. There, there, and and there, there's other music offices. And like you said, like, a lot of them are through, uh, like, CDBs or through chambers. Right. Some cities have them. But the... Uh, uh, the way that Huntsville was approaching it, music is unlike any other city in North America that's ever done in terms of um, you know, putting our foot in the ground and saying, like, being intentional and data-driven about, like, hey, we want to be a, a premier music destination in North America. And, and that's the way I think that we kind of describe it as, you know, we, we don't want to be the same as Austin or Nashville, but we just want to be in the conversation uh, uh, when people are talking mm-hmm. about like the great U.S. music clubs and have like something that's unique to us and special that uh, ties in with like our kind of like community values and, and and our arts and culture scene because it is uh it is uh it is thriving here and it's really really exciting and um and, and that music being an aspect of getting people to check out Huntsville you know we like to say that it's very hard to sell Huntsville in a brochure. Um, people just see it as like, oh, it's a city in Alabama where NASA is. Yeah, Space um, City. You know, it's yeah. a bill. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it, it, we like to say, wait, when you get it, 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 it work for me through like the uh, the job interview process of this, it's like, wait, say, if you can get somebody in Huntsville for for 72 hours and uh, they, they start thinking about never leaving. And so, um, you know, that, that's a catalyst that like music's doing, you know, with, whether it's the shows at the Orion, the Bond Brown Center, or these festivals. Like people, we love seeing license plates that are from out of state, like in the parking lots of our venues, and we love the feedback we're getting of, wow, we had no idea Huntsville was so cool. Um, and so I think that... Uh, I, I heard that said a lot, yeah. Cylinders. But the, uh, yeah, the, the, the government aspect of music is really fun. Um, just the things we're doing, we're the first city to... Uh, for the first city to execute uh, tour grants from a municipality 
uh, from a municipality perspective to where the, uh, if you're a local musician who, uh, uh, has at least five dates on a tour, you're entitled to a $750 to $1,500 grant with a $4,500 annual maximum, uh, for your touring efforts. And what's cool is the, uh, the, uh, Tulsa has actually replicated that program now. The city of Tulsa, they have a Tulsa Encore program where if you look at their website, it's pretty much a copy paste version of ours. Um, and so it's really cool to see like other cities take note of that and kind of follow the lead. And we have a, uh, we have kind of a, there's, there's not a lot of people in the, uh, in the city government, state government, professional realm of music in, in, in America, but the, uh, but the, the ones that are like, we're in a pretty tight hip fraternity and we talk often. And what's really nice is the, uh, in, in the private sector, that might be something seen as like competitive or like something you might want to send out like a cease and desist about. But since it's like civic and government, you know, like we would like, it's, it's almost like we want like any time a city or state like replicates one of our programs or, or we do or vice versa. That it's like, we're, we're very proud of that. And so it's just cool to see the effort. The community has been very, very open and uh, supportive of like the role and uh, especially like the local business owners. Cause you know, we're, we're seeing young and we're seeing a young workforce start to like move into the city and fill these jobs. Let me ask you real quick, uh, Matt, uh, on that, because I wrote it down on my list here uh, that you were just talking about. Is the export programs, that's what you were just referring to, correct? Yes. Um, I saw that that might have come from what, what is Make Export Memphis, or Music Export Memphis. And yeah, I know so you're. Yeah. yeah, one of your, your last gigs or your prior gig to this was uh, creative marketing music director of Graceland, by the mm-hmm. way. You know, we even got to that. Um, in, in Memphis, which is just sounds like a cool gig. I don't know that it is, but it certainly sounds like one, um, oh, well. <laughs> but, but I wanted to speak to that specifically since, especially since you brought it up now where it's a scholarship could be a word that could be used for young people. Uh, grant is a word you used. It, uh, basically it's government subsidized money for bands from Huntsville. We're talking about now where you're, mm-hmm. where you're at now. To, to be compensated for for hitting the road and 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 being a touring band when I first read when I read that I thought that's ambitious man like who qualifies what kind of money are we talking about and then I was curious if, if this was something that you were working on in Memphis first when I saw this mu- uh, music export Memphis can you expi- exp- expand on that a little bit is that where it came from and how that came together mm-hmm. and if if we want to do something like that here in Chattanooga, or somebody want to do that in Lexington or wherever it might be, what are the expectations that the the, the local musicians, which can vary in in every aspect from talent to just overall uh, projections, what could they expect from something like that, and how does that work from a from from the person who might want to take advantage of a government program like that? Sure. And so, uh, well, like, yeah, so I was in Memphis for three years and I had heard, I, I had seen like the music export Memphis logo on a lot of things. Um, but was not really familiar with it. I actually came across Elizabeth, um, at a, uh, at a convention in Tulsa. Like she moderated the panel I was on and we just got to talking and she was talking about this, uh, this, uh, music ambassador like tour grant program that she had executed and, um, how it had been like in place for about five years and, uh, you know, how it was a, uh, you know, because musicians are not grant writers. And so, um, you know, basically she kind of laid it out where it's like, you know, there's a quick, easy form that like musicians can fill out. It takes about five minutes. There's a like, defined set of criteria um, that, uh, that makes you eligible. And then there's a point system that determines like where you get between that like uh, base level to like the high level. And it was a, Frankly, I was like, this is, there's got to be a catch. This is way too good to be true. Yeah. Um, it was trying to like, you know, like, sound like, like, yeah. And I was trying to like, kind of like find holes in it and just couldn't. And so, um, you know, we, we, we got to where we could bring in, uh, her and the music export Memphis team as a consultant, um, to help us develop the program and kind of make it a little more bespoke to hostile. And so that was the, uh, the, the, uh, the end result of like that effort. But, you know, she, she was amazing to work with and, uh, yeah, the the, uh, the response on that program. I think we've uh, funded thirty tours so far, um, and the uh, you know and 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 you know being conscious that like you know 
musicians aligning with a, a government is not always the coolest thing for musicians no, to do. No, so, no, no. They're not going to trust you at all, actually. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and, and there are people that, like, you know, no matter how good of work we do, they'll just, like, never trust us. You know, it's like what comes with, like, government and, and all those yeah, kind of Yeah, rock and roll. But, the, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, so that's why we're very conscious of, like, you know, like, this has to be, like, very like laid out and easy to digest and easy to uh, apply for and like you know what you're getting so we hope that like with the website um when, when you go if you go to hustlemusic.com slash map for music ambassador program because we're putting hustle on the map you can kind of see the the criteria but it, it, it lays it out to where if you're a uh basically you need to have like five tour dates on the book and then they have to be like show, like they have to be like public facing shows they can't be like private events and weddings they have to be uh, um like like concerts or festival plays or things, but like only that. five. That's a good. I mean, that's a starting point yeah. that just about any working band can meet the criteria of if they if if they try hard enough. So that's pretty one hundred percent, and that's what we're really trying to push in our community. And so we're seeing established artists that are that are with agents that are that are kind of a big deal already, like taking advantage of it. But the it, it's 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 a way to encourage and and and, and show the like artists in our community that like you know, to, to help, like, encourage them to take the step and take the risk of, like, go out and tour. Yeah. Where, you know, but, like, like, like 750 it. to $1,500 is not going to fund all the expenses of a tour. But, like, it's a hell of a start. every little bit helps, you know. Yeah. This is, so that, this that's is kind of... really exciting. And the only and the only aspect we, uh, we ask for the artists is simply um, to acknowledge that they participate in the program. Like, they have to make one social media post that basically is like a, hey, like, you know, doesn't even have to say thank you or anything. It's just like, hey, we need you to just like, because like, you have to get something for, for a grant, right? And sure. so, um, you know, so they just have to make a social media post that basically acknowledges they're participating in the program. And then, you know, what's been really awesome is seeing how the, um, you know, a lot of them are like very like long form and very like heartfelt. Like this, like these dollars mean a lot to like these artists. And, you know, like and to see them like keep like applying more and more because you can get up to forty five hundred dollars annually. Um, so we have a couple like uh, that are for they're getting like for like who's going to be the first one to get the annual cap. And so, um, yeah, just to help these artists sustain their careers. And what's really, really amazing is that we're actually seeing like already established like like there's a band called the bernie sisters uh that actually relocated here it's a 17 and a 14 year old but that if like they're a full-time touring man dad is the uh dad's the sound guy mom's a tour manager they have a winnebago they've toured with the avid brothers like they actually relocated their family here a big part of that was because of like the tour grant program because you know the cost of living here is a lot cheaper than other like major safe music markets um, and just were in within a three hour radius of like so many cities. So you can actually live in Huntsville and play Atlanta, Memphis, Nashville, Birmingham, sure. um, Chattanooga and without even needing a hotel if you just like want to drive like, like that three hours. And so, uh, getting people that are actually like, like, like serious artists like relocating here is like because the grant's like a piece of that. And then uh, even more importantly, like Huntsville has been, uh, uh, the story of Huntsville has been a, um, wow, like, once the artist starts getting to a certain level, like, they move to Atlanta, Nashville, somewhere like that. and so Same kind of thing here. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, it, 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 so this program is a way to keep that talent here um, and, and stuff like that. Because, again, it's, it's not a program that's designed to, uh, like, fund the whole tour. But it's like, yeah, like, it's, it's, but it's not biased towards, like, any genre. If you meet these qualifications... Uh, you do this, and what was great with Elizabeth and Music Escort Memphis's expertise is that they'd have five years to kind of uh, uh, figure out their kind of like variables and stuff and make the tweaks. And so we have our program like buried like with, with five years of kind of experience of dialing into things like that to where uh, it's it's just been really really outstanding. We're very proud of it, and the uh, the artists that are participating in it are like very proud of it too, which. Uh, which which really means a lot. Like when you when you see a cool band, when you see a cool band talking about how proud they are to live in Huntsville and that, like how proud they are that like the city is like supporting their efforts, like that is just man. Like coming from the private sector, that's just mind blowing. You just don't see that. How much of that is your job versus? I mean, when we first started talking, you know, the idea is to to make people aware of Memphis, uh, Memphis, make people aware of Huntsville. And the thought is the touring acts, mm -hmm. but that's not all what you just were talking about. It's making 
musicians want to be live there. But you mentioned uh, in, in that article we alluded to earlier that you need more of the infrastructure type, the music industry people, the PR people, the producers, the engineer. Same conversations we're having in Chattanooga, and it's it's the how to support that and who can support it. You know, we have lots of people tra- who move here from Nashville. They don't want the big city. They like the the smaller and they can do things here more, but we're having those same struggles, you know, mm-hmm. those same conversations of, you know, we need more venues for these people to play. We need more money. We need more fans. I mean, all of those things. So how much of that is your job? I mean, it's um, a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, the, the, the music office role expands to where it's the, um, I mean, it, it is, it's, I would say like, so you have the Orion Amphitheater and the C3 Presents Festival is kind of like the, uh, like big end of like the big projects, like big kind of like pieces that can attract like the global interest from like the music community and like music fans to looking at, you know, like you have fish playing at a venue, you have people from outside the United States that are like going to see your venue, at least on a website, you know? Um, so there's that aspect, but then there's also, I mean, it, it, even like elementary education, like working with like the school programs to ensure that they have the resources they need to make sure their programs are as dynamic and innovative as possible. Uh, and also like the, uh, the community nonprofits that, that focus on music. And so we, we, we have the big picture, like big commercial, uh, sexy pieces with like the big name, uh, bands that everybody knows, but, um, I would say that it's, it's, it's even more of a focus to develop that, like, kind of like local environment and, you know, the, the more dynamic, professional, sustainable musicians you have in a community, um, I mean, just, to, just the better your community is going to be. Um, you know, cause a lot of these bands, when they're not on tour, they might have side projects and be playing at like local venues, like local bars and kind of like working with, uh, just kind of like playing with like other locals, like El- Rising Tide Lips All Boats. Uh, the better players you have in your city, whether it's for one night or permanently, it just is naturally going to elevate uh, their your whole culture. Similar to how, when, you know, there there was some um, anxiety that the, that the other stakeholders in the city had about the Orion Amphitheater. Well, when Orion has a show, like, will anything else in the city be able to happen? Um, which, well, you know, we we proved that like right away with like opening nights, where we actually had. A, with opening night, the Orion, we had a sold out show but on that same night. We had a sold out show with, I think it was Brooks and Dunn at our 8,000 capacity, like Brooks Center Arena. And so we've had nights that have been really cool where we have like a big show at the Probst Arena, a sold out minor league hockey or a sold out minor league baseball game, a sold out soccer game and a sold out Orion show all on the same night. And, and just seeing like how the, uh, the, the calendars of the other venues in towns, um, uh, calendars have looked with just like the number of shows and the quality of shows um, since the Orion's been built, I think has been uh, has been really, really awesome and spectacular. It proves that kind of rising tides approach to where, you know, you do things like South Star and the Orion, it just puts the industry and the agents and the management's attentions just on your market to where, you know, like like my morning jackets manager or agent might like put my morning jacket in the Orion, but as y'all know, like these like agents have like a ton of developing acts, and so now they're looking at, right. at just like Huntsville as a place they need to play uh, instead of us like having to go out. And so it's been really good seeing uh, all shapes and sizes. I mean, we had George, we had George Strait in Huntsville uh, on Wednesday night, which was that's still mind blowing to me. That George Strait came here. <laughs> well, we we could do this for a while, exactly. and we don't have we don't have a while. Um, <laughs> no, we need to let you go. Thank but, you for your time, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, all of it does fascinate me though, because there's so many parallels to what we what we dream of here in the city of Chattanooga. All of us here are, are uh, essentially Uh-oh. lifelong, and we probably found it. But there ah, is. there we go. Uh, all of us here are long, essentially lifelong Chattanoogans. So we you know we dream as much as we follow the local governments and and. There's a lot of change over there, too. You might not be in this position in five years. You know, Matt, I mean, I'm not trying to sell you short, but you might not be. And what you just discussed in the in the schools, well, that's generational change. Mm -hmm. You can get some stuff done here in a few years. You take the as you take the job, as you've moved around from the private to public sector, you've been in some really cool cities. You kicked around the Carolinas to Austin, Memphis, you know, but generational change. (laughs) <laughs> that that's bold you oh, know yeah. that, that's a bold thing to talk about um 
trying to bring a few extra bands to town. Certainly got a boldness to it, too. But certainly um, really think it's very cool what the city's doing and, and the, the, the way that you have embraced it and just your energy here today. It, it's, it's pretty clear. And yeah, the commitment. It, it's, it's, That's it's, what it's, I'm impressed with is the Yeah, it's nice to see. It, it really is. The super fast thing. I, I know you played music early on, and it sounds like the way that it read, it was the same way as me, um, or at least similar. You realize, at least the way it read, you weren't, that was not where your best talents were. You weren't going to be, I think you said the next day, Matthews, or maybe Bob Dylan, or whatever it was. Um, how hard was that for you? Because for me, at first, I struggled with it 15, 20, 20 years ago. I want to be a rock star. Well, buddy, you're not going to. So yeah. <laughs> you better yeah. figure out something else. I'll tell you what. Okay, my my ego was a place where like I was <laughs> I was there. Uh, it took me one week living in Austin, Texas, and, and doing just the like open mic, open jam scene at coffee shops and small venues to realize like I ain't good enough yeah, for this. Like there is just no <laughs> yeah. like I like because 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 I pulled around and like you know I actually started playing music in college because I busted up my knee playing basketball and was kind of like. You know, needed something to do, so I bought a guitar, picked up, like learned how to play five chords, and play five chords. You can play like bars, you know. Twenty like, years, that's like, all you. GCD twenty years ago, that's all you needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like right, you, can, you can do a three-hour GCD rendition of everything, and so you know, if, and I was like, yeah, this is this is the difference of people who can really play. Um, yeah. And then, but you know, it, uh, I got really lucky. I uh, I was in a softball league. Uh, with uh, with a guy named Brad Spees, who I would say was my first industry mentor, he was the uh, the head of special projects at South by Southwest. Kind of there told my situation, and um, and, and and he created like a kind of seasonal position for me too, where it's like, man, he's like, I know you're green, but you know, you're you're older than most of like the the 22 year olds that are taking these positions. And I and I had done like some work like in day jobs, and I had a pretty solid resume to fall back on if if the music thing didn't pan out, but. You know, I just I jumped in and fell like man, that 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 guy is was a big reason. Just I got excited showing up and working with him every day about all the stuff that South by Southwest was doing. And so uh, it was uh, it was about a week of like, what the heck am I going to do now? I realized that my challenge yeah. is just I'm never going to be there. But it uh yeah it it, uh, it it got there quickly. And I mean you know just it's just committed to it. And then from there, just like new opportunities kept creating themselves for it. Because I mean I've just I'm always, I always just like I've never been the smartest person in the room, but I always work hard at what I'm doing, and I've been I'm, I'm, I'm good at kind of surrounding myself with with people who are smart and dynamic. And so I think as long as we're doing that in Huntsville, bringing in the smart people who can really really like move the needle and and elevating the uh, the, the culture here and the, and the dynamic talent, then I think that you know like like being a cheerleader is like a, a very fun part of the job. I always loved hearing the stories about the people who moved to Nashville and, you know, they get a job waiting tables and figure out that the guy washing dishes is a better guitar player than they are. You, know, <laughs> right. you hear those stories all the time. But, uh, Matt, man, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we will man, definitely do this again if you are willing because oh, – uh, Any time. And, 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 and we actually have had, like, conversations with, like, some people in Chattanooga. Um, we're, we're, we're very, we would love to develop a um, – of, like we call these these export programs, we're actually like launching uh, um, one soon. Like we've we've kind of started gently going into one with uh, some partners we have in Nashville, uh, in kind of a development basis with uh, some people down on that Barry Hill campus. That's really exciting, and that's, see that's the thing. It's like you know starting something with Chattanooga. You know, we just need to find the right partner because it's pretty easy given the like radio story. You know, it's it's as easy as like doing a showcase in Chattanooga with a handful of hustle artists. And then like the next month or next quarter yeah. doing a showcase with Chattanooga artists here. And that's right. an easy way to kind of break it. And I, I really think that, you know, if we can spur more like city government and, and civic like roles to kind of take what we're doing in hustle, then, Oh, that would be, uh, yeah. I think that if, if, if every city had a music office, regardless of how like efficient or effective it is, I mean, I think that that would be, uh, I mean, what a win for, Everybody. We're close. We're close. We definitely have a mayor who's committed. He loves music as much as we do, but uh, we, there's so many other things for them to focus on that uh, mm -hmm. dedicating an office like that, I don't think we're there yet. But uh, anyway, we got to get. Um, thank yep. you again Thanks, for your man. time. Um, but, you know, seriously, we could do this for the rest of the day. I could anyway. Yeah, so. I, I love it again. I mean, any time you'll love to. I mean, this is. 
this is great. <laughs> and actually, and, and, and my kid, I have a four year old who's huge into aquariums. And so, uh, we, uh, we come on up. I'm there, on. So I'll let <laughs> yeah. y'all know when uh, next time we're coming. We're about to like see y'all in person. It Absolutely. ain't as cool as everybody says it is. I'll That's just let not you true. Know, Don't man. listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> he hates everything. It's great. All right. All Thanks, right. Matt. See you, Matt. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, but there you go. I mean, so again, I'm, I keep going back to who's listening to the show. You know, are, are they industry people? I think so. I hope so. I think they are. But also, am I that person who just bought a ticket because I'm going to my first festival and I want to see Gwen Stefani and it wasn't raining that hard? You know, why'd you got to cancel? <laughs> I get it. And I, I'm not making fun. I'm really not because I would have been that person. But sure. there's a whole lot more. There is a whole lot more that's involved uh, in these kind of decisions. And uh, that's one. The other thing is I'm so impressed with how long term they're thinking. Oh, I know. Yeah, they they've really committed to this thing. They really want to transform Huntsville into a not another Nashville, but, you know, it's a music destination that when people think music, they want people to associate that with Huntsville. That's a big goal. When you just said that, I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, documentary about what, you know, uh, country music, I'm sure, uh, yeah, it was the country music, why, why East Tennessee versus Nashville, and mm. why did Nashville become the country music center? It was the paper. Because that's where the lawyers live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the contracts are made. That's so, yeah, the Huntsville is works. Yeah. just like Chattanooga. It's never going to be Nashville because that's right. where the contracts. That's funny. I hadn't thought about that till you just said that. <laughs> uh, all right. So, guys, we have so much more to talk about. Uh, Russ's T-shirt. I can't wait to hear about K-Fest. You went with some good friends of ours, our new camp. Buddies right. from Bonnaroo. Buddies. Yeah, I'll just shout out Jerry and Mike and Brad, Nashville Brad and and Beth, who we've had on the show before, and we've you know you've probably heard about all these people that we kind of merged our camps together, and uh, this was neat because it was like South Star. It was kind of a you know instead of a once a year thing when we get to see everybody, it's turned into twice a year, even well, more maybe. Uh, if if you had dialed up the weather. I don't think you could have got better. Oh, my God. The, yeah. Coming after South Star and then the extreme heat of Bonnaroo, uh, this was just perfect. Textbook perfect weather. Warm and sunny during the day. A little cool at night. You put on, your, uh, put on your jacket, put on your flannel, and we just had a great time. Weather was absolutely perfect. Yeah, I can't wait. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to eventually revisit uh because we missed an anniversary uh x at 111 yeah, uh, hit yeah. The five it's hard to believe that was five, five years, ago. years uh and so we all have stories about that that we're going to revisit in, in the coming weeks and then we have some very special guests that we're trying to line up so um again as i said at the beginning we think this is the kind of quiet time <laughs> but uh there's a lot happening we so. keep finding more and more conversations. Okay, so there you go. Uh, another good show. And Matt, thank you so much. Man, I hope you'll come back because this was awesome. We mm -hmm. learned a lot. 